do not start the episode after <laughs> saying that. That puts me at the worst possible. Oh my god. Dude, I was about to respond to that. <laughs> what the hell, dude? That wasn't even nice. That was that was that was actually mean. I am upset. I didn't think you were gonna say anything, Mel. I was about to say something, and then I heard "but that," and I was like, "Fuck! Not this time." <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, welcome to What Are We Reading? We're reading whatever the fuck that thing is called, Atlanta Nights, right? That's what we call this bullshit story? <laughs> I'm Zane. I'm Lydic. <laughs> and this is chapter fucking 27. Let's just fucking start already. Oh my god. <sighs> god damn, dude. Oh. <laughs> uh, you fucking... <laughs> That, like, you pretty much just, like, you did the Charlie Brown, like, move the football so I tripped down. That's what you just did. <laughs> that wasn't even intentional. Well, congratulations. <laughs> you fucked me. <laughs> it was early morning in the first part of the day. <laughs> the sun was just coming up. Bruce sat at his morning breakfast table. The newspaper was in front of him. His black silk monogram dressing gown barely concealed the rippling muscles of his chest and back. You could tell he had not shaved yet from the dense yet attractive forest of blonde stubble on his cleft chin and sculpted cheeks. He rubbed his aquiline nose. Then, when he reached up to push the soft blonde hair back from his manly forehead, his hand encountered the bandages still there. <clears throat> he frowned. The gesture making ripples of thought on his brow between the limited blue holes of where his. Ugh. I am You're not okay? mentally prepared to read now. <laughs> <sighs> he frowned. The gesture making ripples of thought on his brow between the limpid blue pools that were his eyes. I must remember what happened, he told himself sternly, his deep, resonant voice trembling huskily with emotion. What is he, Shadow the Hedgehog? <laughs> I must remember what happened in my past. B Maria! Ugh. I don't remember this place. <laughs> Who am I? Oh, All I it. see is that horrible visage. My Chaos favorite part. What? My favorite part in like his official game after he see says like all I remember is that horrifying image. Like right after that, he has the flashback where he's running down the hall with Maria, and so like the first thing you see is her face. <laughs> all I remember is that horrifying visage, Maria. <laughs> Damn, she was an ugly bitch. <laughs> You're gonna give her a complex shadow. She's just a small child. <laughs> He told himself sternly, his deep, resonant voice trembling huskily with emotion. He still could not recall anything about the automobile accident that had sent him to the hospital with a severe head injury. That the bandage on his head now covered the 18 suitors that a top-notch surgeon at St. Ivan's Hospital had spent long in carefully suturing into his brow. He tried and tried until sweat popped out of his smooth skin of his forehead and glistened there, but he could not remember a damn thing. Damn it! He had to. He just had to. Meow. <laughs> Meow. Said the neighbor's cat at the window. It was not Bruce's cat, hence why it was clarified it was the neighbor's, but sometimes he let it in and fed it. It was a very expensive purebred Siamese, and the cat had known it. Ah, oh, shit, is it? Is it Lloyd? Is it Lloyd? Does he live next door to the cinema snob? What's the cinema snob doing in Atlanta? <laughs> oh boy, this universe's canon's really all messed up. His blue eyes were the sh same shade of the limpid pool blue pools that were Bruce's eyes. Go away! <laughs> Shouted Bruce, his despair and confusion making him uncharacteristically grumpy with the cat that he sometimes fed and petted. Just leave me alone! <laughs> his despair. Oh god, it's Danganronpa! <laughs> oh, that'd be great. Just but a moment. Oh god, all of them are trapped in a killing game. 
they'd be too retarded to actually figure out who the first killer was. <laughs> How the fuck did he turn into butter? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear but an God. instant later, he regretted his temper. He opened the window and let the cat in, who did not give a shit. The cat found some milk for it in the refrigerator. And having chopped up some leftover cooked chicken livers and a few sardines in a can that was there. Oh, carefully chopped up. Whoops. The cat purred while it ate. Cats purr while they do everything. <laughs> Cats would purr while killing you. Oh, <laughs> uh, look at this dead old lady. I remember all the good times we had. She's just purring as she's ripping her skin off. Oh, boy. <laughs> Uh, oh, I'm oh, sorry. God. I, 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 <laughs> I just remembered something that I'm going to regret having to do because I've started do working on the let's play I'm doing of Honey Pop. Oh. And I am not looking forward to Momo. Oh. Uh... The problem I have with her is honestly the problem I have with like ma the majority of anime cat girls and the fact that they don't act anything like cats. <laughs> What do you mean? If you drop a fish, that's how you see her. No, no, no. I'm talk. That's not what I ha I'm talking about. I'm talking about the fact that she is an e uh, that she is eager to please, happy go lucky, and subservient for some reason. Oh yeah, no, that's not gonna fly with a cat. <laughs> Cats are vindictive little assholes that are prone to random bouts of violence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and while they might enjoy your company, they typically act like they don't. What my point is, is that there's a reason there that, like, cats have a habit of literally just shoving shit off of tables just because they can. <laughs> I want to see just once, like, an anime cat girl that actually does act like a cat and just has habit, a habit of, like, just violently throwing things off the protagonist, like, counter. <laughs> or just randomly punching people. <laughs> just goes around insulting everybody. <laughs> Because we all know that's how it would really go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, God. What, what I could be... Uh, what I could be... Would that I could be as sublime as you, a small feline friend? Uh, Bruce said wearily, sadly, depressedly. Bruce, can I offer you an egg in this trying time? He petted the cat a few times, and then went back to his chair. He sat down on it. Outside the window, it was morning. The sun was just coming up. The wind was blowing sweet, uh, sweetly through the Georgia pines. He thought, just for, uh, for just a moment, how lucky he was to live in Atlanta. Georgia when the sun... Oh, God damn it! How lucky he was to live in Atlanta, Georgia, the southern part of the United States. Suddenly, Bruce's eyes fell on the newspaper on the table in front of him. The headlines seemed to shriek at him. Millionaire industrialist Henry Archer dead at 60! Tragic car accident claims his life! Kelly Archer now went out! His eyes crawled frantically over the newspaper, devouring the awful and confusing details of his death. The reporter had written a good but grisly report on the millionaire's death. Bruce cringed as he read it as... What? as he read of the bright star of blood on the shattered windshield where Henry Archer's head had smashed against it. The reporter <laughs> noted that the man's body still gripped a cell phone in his one lifeless hand after he di he was dead. Had he been talking on the phone when he died? Bruce's Shouldn't have been doing that. <laughs> Bruce's hated it when drivers in other cars talked on the phone when they were driving. It was certainly a dangerous and rude practice. Perhaps Henry Archer's death had been the result of his own rudeness and carelessness <laughs> in the driving while talking on the cell phone. <laughs> sure, he's de sure he's dead, but the guy was an asshole. Yeah. So, for my summer job, I actually get on, like, those huge, like, 18-wheeler trucks. I don't drive them, but I sit yeah. shotgun. Yeah. And there's one driver at the company who knows that people, like, sit on their fucking phone while driving, right? Yeah. So what he will do is, since he knows that people aren't looking at the light, they're looking at the people next to them. Mm -hmm. He'll, while sitting at the stoplight while it's red, start to drive. Oh! They quickly stop, because oh, everyone okay. around them thinks they're driving. So he's yeah. he's got people like shoot shoot out and almost run red lights because they're looking at him and not the light. Oh God! <laughs> yeah. Well, it does. Uh, I'm trying to remember. There is one state in which it is actually illegal for truck drivers to read comic books while on the job. 
<laughs> because apparently there was just a thing of truck drivers getting bored on the road. <laughs> and they uh, read comic books. Yeah, truck driver comic law. Let me see if I can find this. God damn it! What? Uh, most bizarre driving rules books. Let's see. Uh, control F. Nope. Comic. In Oklahoma, you will be ticketed for reading comic books while driving. Oh, Oklahoma. Yeah. Because apparently that's an issue in Oklahoma. <laughs> oh, wow. That's actually really stupid. Anyway. Uh, then his eyes were suddenly trapped like wolves in jaw traps. In one... One sudden detail from the newspaper article seized him by the throat and squeezed like a noose around his neck. It was the date and time of the accident. 4.03 p.m. on July 20th. No, it can't be! Bruce shouted the words. He stood up from his chair. The Siamese neighbor's cat jumped in terror. Meow! It cried piteously. Meow! Meow! Ah, oh, God. I'm sorry, Pity Pat. Oh, so it's not, it's not Lloyd. It just has a terrible name. Pity Pat's a, a cute name, don't eat it. Oh, God, that is a terrible name. I'm gonna name my cat Pity Pat. <laughs> I'm naming mine God, because it is a cruel and vindictive one. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it, I really wish God would stop knocking the vases off the countertop. <laughs> I Damn it, God clawed the curtains again. Oh my gosh, that would be beautiful. <laughs> I really wish God would shit inside the litter box for once. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's getting really confusing and really blasphemous. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, Pity Pat. Bruce apologized to the Siamese cat. I didn't mean to startle you, but I think that Henry Archer's accident happened at the same date and time that mine did. Oh, oh, look at me. What am I coming to? Talking to a cat. I'm a successful software developer, not some kind of crazy man, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> it depends on who voices the cat. Have you heard of that terrible movie, A Talking Cat? <laughs> no. Oh, my God. Well, it's not a talking cat, because it's spelled, because it's ended with an exclamation mark, a, qu uh, a quote, uh, question mark, and another exclamation point. So it's a talking cat! And oh my god. Oh my god, you need to, you need to find a way to watch that movie. Alright. Uh, maybe. Maybe we should just watch it right now. You know, just... <laughs> Boom. Just no more of this episode. We're just gonna go watch a movie. Just in the middle, it's audio of us reacting to a talking cat. <laughs> oh boy, that's all I can think of when I hear that is that stupid movie with what's his face, where all the animals were talking. That's not. That's that not very it? specific. Are we talking about Doctor Doolittle? Or are we talking about so. the zookeeper? I think it's Doctor Doolittle. Because Doctor yeah, Doolittle Dr. Doolittle was. Dr. Doolittle was watchable. The zookeeper yeah. was, abs was an absolute insult to humanity. Starring Kevin Smith. <laughs> 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 Which, I, I guess that should be expected whenever your movie's starring Paul Blart Mall Cop. <laughs> oh, boy. He stood up from his chair. He paced around the room. Then he made himself go to his leather, monogrammed briefcase and take out the doctor's report from his hospitalization. His eyes slid swiftly down the papers and suddenly snagged on the very information he sought. There it was. The doctor had written down that the emergency medical people from the ambulance that brought him to the hospital that had brought in that his accident had probably happened at 4.03 p.m. on July 20th, the very same day and time that Henry Archer's accident happened. Congratulations. Your, your drunken ass is responsible for another man's death. 
Yay! You get an award. A plus for effort. He exclaimed, It has to be a coincidence! It just has to! Bruce shouted. Then he made himself calm down. He walked back to the kitchen table and sat down. He looked at the newspaper there, the bloody tragic headlines still screaming their unimaginable Below the big print of the large headline was a society photo of Henry Archer and his wife Callie Archer. Callie was in a breathtaking lace evening gown by Chris, Christian Dior. Dior. Besides her, looking stricken by his wife's breathtaking beauty was Henry Archer in an impeccable black tuxedo by Ralph Lauren and a white shirt and black tie, even covered Black's by a tie. Blacks. Those damn blacks ties. <laughs> even covered by a tuxedo, Bruce could see that Henry Archer still had a muscular body of the body. Build, builder. Uh, the bodybuilder he had once been, but was no more now that he was 60 years old. Dude Guy is was... built like a freight train. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than the other body type we saw last time. True. Ugh. Diamonds gliss glittered on an immense pendant at Cali Archer's throat. Diamonds bigger than pearls hung from her earlobes, shining like soft icicles. Well, at least she will have a lot of money now that he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> she's a left poor and destitute pushing a shopping cart down the street and living in a cardboard box in an alley and eating leftover McDonald's food from the dumpster. At least there's that to be thankful for, he said to the now porn star, pretty much. No, not that's Callie. Not, no, that's it, whatever. Irene. Irene's a porn star. Callie's not. Yeah, Irene's his mistress. Ah. Callie is the wife. You could tell he was a lot in of the process of divorcing. He, well, you've oh, also been gone for, like, half of it. Not half of it. The story's too long for me to be gone for that much. We've recorded 12 episodes, not including these two. And I was gone for four, right? I think you were gone for a bit more than four. Shit. I have been gone for a long time. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> then the coincidence of the times of death hit him all over again. Can there be a connection? He had to, uh, had to ask himself. Meow, said Pity Pat, his soulful blue eyes shining up at Bruce. The cat seemed to, uh, seemed to want to help him. Cats are naturally sympathetic animals. Wrong. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. They're like, if you're injured, a cat will typically be sympathetic. But that's typically because in your injured state, your body's creating more heat. <laughs> so they use you as a space heater. <laughs> Oh, boy. Cats are dicks. Yeah, but I love them anyway. I wish I had a cat, but half my family's allergic. And Patty was no exception. He could see that the big muscular human who sometimes fed him chicken gizzards and salmon was distressed. His little heart went out to the man. Meow. He said again, softly. Hoping to have him put food down anyways, despite his distressed state. <laughs> Just rubbing up against his leg. <laughs> Bruce... Stop human, I require food. <laughs> Bring me few food, human. That's what I really want to see. Cause like, there's some book I read when I was younger called Invasion of the Road Wingies, which was Weenies, which is was a, just a bunch of weird short stories in a similar yeah. vein to Goosebumps. Yeah. And some kid wished to like be able to understand what animals said. Oh god. <laughs> and I think the entire neighborhood hated this guy the entire neighborhood hated the kid like i think a dog called him ugly <laughs> and the birds outside were singing about how much they hated humans in general oh just oh, okay so imagine waking up every morning to bird song of just i hate you constantly and then having all the animals call you ugly honestly like with the stuff i've been saying i'm still just imagining like an anime cat girl that acted like an actual cat <laughs> That's exactly what Pity Pat is. <laughs> Give me food. Give me food. Psh, no. <laughs> They're like complaining about your day. It's like, yeah, yeah, that's nice. What can I eat? <laughs> that has hey, to be. Hey, funny. hey, just stop moving. I'm trying to use you as a pillow. <laughs> oh, boy. Like, I'm just imagining, like, the whole relationship with the stereotypical anime cat girl. It's like the whole thing of, like, they're, they're an asshole, but you can tell that they do enjoy your presence. <laughs> I can just picture them sucking up to people, trying to look all cute like the other cat girls, but deep down, they've been a dick so long, you're just like, cut the shit, what do you want? <laughs> it's just a whole thing of like, what the fuck is wrong with you people? 
<sighs> Have you no shame? <laughs> We're stupid. Like, down. Oh, what? Sorry, continue. Uh, continue. Like, you know the whole thing? Uh, Oh, shit, you never had a cat. But, like, if you've ever, like, one of the whole things, like, if you have only one cat and they, like, smell that you've been around other animals and so they get, like, possessive and just start, like, headbutting you. They do? <laughs> yeah, because they have those scent glands, like, right on top of their head in front of the ear. Ears. Uh, oh. <laughs> so, like, part of the reason why they rub up against you is they're basically claiming you as their property. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I'm just imagining like an anime cat girl that acts like an actual cat. It's just like you belong to me. <laughs> just sitting down, like when you walk in, like an and their just, like, husband shows up late, but it's your cat. So, like... what's this smell I smell on you? Have you been talking to the neighbor's dog? No. Are you trying to get a dog? Is that what you're saying? You not like me. <laughs> Like, they give you a hug, but it's not like they actually doing it because they care. Like, outwardly, they're not doing it because they care about you. They're basically just trying to make you smell like them. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, this is a around. really aggressive hug. Shut up. <laughs> I'm not going to speak to you until you smell normally. Smell normally? What do you mean? I could smell them on you. Who? <laughs> the other cats. <laughs> You belong to me and me alone. Never forget that. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> you little bitch. <laughs> what I'm saying is that anime cat girls should really be sadist. <laughs> Bruce stooped down and petted the cat. I know you want to help. Cats are naturally sympathetic animals. <laughs> he said it again. Cats Bruce is an idiot. <laughs> I think his brain got fried from the car accident. <laughs> Obviously, you really care about me and not the fact that I provide you food and heat. I just don't think that there's any way you can help me, little fellas. <laughs> I have to <laughs> do it. catch more than one cat. Oh, God, they're multiplying. <laughs> the cats are breeding by mitosis. What if there was, like, one cat that acted like a normal cat, but then they lived with, like, a stereotypical anime neko? <laughs> Oh, and every God. once in a while, the normal acting cat would, like, just slap or punch the other cat. <laughs> <laughs> fucking idiot, what is wrong with you? <laughs> uh, like, I can picture the normal cat trying to teach the Neko to, like, treat the human like a piece of, like, you know, a tool. Property. Like a, yeah, like a piece of property. It's just like, he'll give he you He exists food you to do. bring you food. Nothing more. <laughs> But then the cat just like, I love my meowster. And it's oh, just God. Like, ah. Every time they say that, there's just the cat's just like, oh, boy. The cat yeah, has this the is going to be a lot. I do. Vomit, vomiting in their mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh. We should really move past this cat and keep reading. I feel like I need to make a webcomic based around the premise of an anime cat girl that acts like an actual cat now. <laughs> <sighs> like with how long we've talked about this. I mean, I think it would work. It's actually kind of, I don't, it's like unique enough. I haven't really heard about it. Yeah, like the closest we have is the Nekomata from Monogatari. But I don't even know what that is, so like, who cares? In which she like ripped off the main character's arm at one point. What? Yeah. Why? Uh, honestly, I don't suggest watching Monogatari, anything from the Monogatari series anyway. It's just, eh. You, you remember, uh, have you seen, like, that toothbrush scene? Like, floating around? No, is this that one anime where this one person shoves their, like, hand into their brain to scratch at it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, but, I don't really want to read something like that. Uh... Toothbrush gif? I feel like if I search anime toothbrush gif, I'm... Okay, yep, I get this one. And I also get the Don Machi one. I'm much happier with the Don Machi one. <laughs> because that is one of the most adorable things I've ever seen. This, on the other hand... Because I am showing this to you, because, dear fucking lord... If I can just... Open link and tap... <laughs> God... <laughs> waiting. I'm trying to open the GIF by itself so that you can just see the GIF, but it keeps <laughs> opening new pages. 
<laughs> and it keeps opening like new sites, so I end up with like that and like an entire Reddit site dedicated to toothbrush gifts and anime. Fuck, you're gonna have to click on the link. Oh god. Uh, what the fuck? Can we move on? No. Why? Why is right. this? <laughs> I'll do the mono I'll do not the mono uh, I'll do the Don Machi one to balance it out because Jesus Christ, that is the most adorable thing I've ever seen. Please do, and then can we move on? <laughs> yeah. We've yeah. been stuck on cats and now it's toothbrushes. How do we go from cats <laughs> to toothbrushes? I don't know. Uh, All right. I really think every episode of Just Us should just be called Off Topic. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's nice and adorable. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I fucking love Don Machi because it has the most adorable protagonist I've ever seen. We could talk about it later or watch it All in right. anime. Let's go. We've got a story to read. Where, were, where are we? Watching. <laughs> Uh, let's see, uh, a little, f okay, I had to do this myself. I had to find out the details of my car accident. I had to remember exactly what happened to me that day. I'm the only one who could do it, Pity Pat, the only one! <laughs> Bruce decided to get dressed. First, he would take a shower, being very careful of the bandage on his 12 stitches that now screamed his- Seamed. <laughs> Seamed his forehead. He also, did it say it was 18 stitches earlier? Uh, counter the bandages. Maybe I misread. Anyway. Crap, you got me. Yeah, it's 18 suitors. Sutures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it changed the number of stitches. Wow, okay. He, ha he has some serious brain damage. That's what's going on. <laughs> he went to the bathroom. It was tiled in sandstone and umber. The towels matched. He stepped into the hot spring spray. A hot digging spray of the shower, dropping his silken bathrobe behind him onto the mat like a discarded flower petal. He'd been deflowered. Oh my. <laughs> he took up a big bar of sandalwood soap and soaked the dark mat of his hair on his chest. He washed under his arms and then his legs and feet and then his huge dig. Then he washed his arms and neck. He wished he could shampoo his hair, but what would? But that would get his bandage wet, so he had to not do it today. He went to soap off himself, and then he stepped out of the shower and toweled off. He was glad he kept his body in such good shape. Someday, a woman would appreciate what good care he had taken, he had taken of himself, and the firm muscles that colored his bronzed arms. I'm pretty sure most of the people that would appreciate it are just other guys at the gym. <laughs> Sweet broad, bruh. Dude, you know it's true, and it's always, and like, it's that whole thing where it's like, I don't think they actually are gay, but there is this slight homoerotic tension to it. <laughs> For it, yeah. I, it's like, I, dude, dude, nice lifts. Nice gains, bro. Nice Sleep gains, bro. Out. Let me feel your pecs. No bro, homo. can I feel your bicep? Yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Not many software developers cared about what they looked like. Some of the software developers he knew looked like soggy mushroom people who had lived too long in the moist darks of their offices. Like, like Zane. Me. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> we both called it right then. <laughs> oh boy, not Bruce. He knew that this was the only body he would ever get and that he had to take good care of it. If not yeah, for himself, then for the love and admiration of the woman who would someday share its pleasure with him. At least until he could implant his brain into a robotic body. He At was which a he would developer. be eternal. Mm-hmm. He got dressed quickly. He put on Eddie, Bo uh, Eddie Bauer tap, uh, top slacks and a shirt and a pale blue plaid. He pulled on a pair of black boots. He looked good in a rugged, outdoorsy way. You wouldn't have looked at him and thought, he's a computer software developer. You would have thought he was a forest ranger or maybe even a mountaineer guide. Because he was covered in dirt. <laughs> That shower did nothing for him. His brain damage made him think he had one, but he really hasn't in <laughs> For some days. reason, his body was freckled in a way that made it look like he was covered in dust. <laughs> he had skin cancer. <laughs> Just had, like, some, like, 
like weird pan lines and shit like that. So it's just like, <laughs> bruh, you've been outside all day, like hiking through the woods because you look like you're covered in dirt. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm completely clean. What? <laughs> Are you sure? They like just take one look to this bandaged forehead, like, uh, is he okay? <laughs> Go get him checked out for brain trauma. He looked in a mirror and smiled a sad smile. Yes, he looked tough today, but he would have to be tough too. <laughs> <laughs> you okay, bro? What... Yeah. Yeah, bro. I'm okay. He knew what he should do. He should go straight to Cali Archer. That would get him the information he needed. He'd be able to discover if his terrible car wreck and Henry Archer's terrible car accident were connected in any way. He tried not to think of Cali Archer as she had looked in the newspaper photograph. He would not think of her soft blonde hair and ringlets on her pale forehead. Ten bucks, she's going to talk about her boobs. <laughs> or the soft brown eyes staring out of the, out of the page at him. She would, she would be well taken care of. That was what was important, wasn't it? Then she didn't have to end up living on the streets now that her wealthy industrial hu industrialist husband was dead. Wow. You owe me 10 bucks. Boobs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, I think it should be mentioned that there was some mention of the fact that Henry Archer's brakes had apparently been cut before the accident. <laughs> like, sabotaged? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Whoa, okay. <laughs> so this is getting real concerning. Yeah. Goodbye, Pity Pat, he said as he left the apartment. <laughs> the cat replied. It was, much, it, was, it was as much of an answer to his questions as he would get that day. Aw, rip. Chapter 28. The funeral had been hell. Funerals are bad enough when you don't know the dead guy at all. <laughs> <laughs> what are you <laughs> What are you guys part matching funeral? <laughs> <laughs> He's picking up strangers at the wake. Oh. <laughs> Who wants to come to my sweet banging funeral? I don't even know who's in this casket. <laughs> He's just going to random people's funerals and like hitting on like, the widow <laughs> or the widower or whatever. <laughs> oh, and they're wow. a pain when you have to just when you have to show up, uh, just have to show up socially, or else everyone will think you're ungrateful jerks with no respect for someone decent and kind. As all dead guys are, irregardless of how they live, they're rotten, two-time, sadistic, pathetic, discombobulatingly senseless, irreligious, unthinking, flakes, debauched, foul-mouthed, obnoxious, deviant, gross, adulterous, murderous, gluttonous, alcoholic, lazy, indulgent, filthy, grotesquely, and uh, indecent, lunatic lives. Jesus. Close parentheses. <sighs> I wonder who this person is. Or that you've come just for the food afterwards, uh, just for the food afterwards, or to show off your latest dress, or to spit in the coffin while nobody's looking. Jesus Christ! You don't even know who this person is! All we know is that she's wearing a dress. So I guess she has a habit of going to random strangers' funerals and hitting on people. Apparently. fucking <laughs> And funerals for true beloved dead guys are wait, are awful because, after all, someone you've wanted to spend your whole life with is dead in the coffin, and although he's really stiff now, <laughs> you'll never get right to ways. enjoy that ever again. And all those people around you, and all the, the all that hypocrisy and sycophant and wallflowers and show-offs and all the and are all gambling, uh, gabbing and staring at you and critiquing your red eyes and the running mascara and eyeshadow and expecting you to be brave or hold it all in or keep a steep step up, stiff upper lip <laughs> or expecting you to go out with them afterwards and then ball you senselessly so you could forget the dead guy and fall passionately in lust with them instead and because it's all so bloody expensive that it's going to use up most of the insurance settlement and the estate than what it is, uh, than what is you're supposed to live on for hell's sakes. Uh... Some of that wasn't just me stumbling over words. Some of that was just bad grammar. <laughs> uh... <laughs> you okay is this there? somebody who just actually hates funerals? We haven't got so. any character introductions or like a name of anyone. 
It's she just, just a rant. Funerals. It's just a rant about funerals. Even a worse rant are... about corpse parties. <laughs> Even worse are funerals for beloved dead guys who are married to someone else, so you have to go kind of in disguise and make uh... like you were just friends with the guy instead of having wild sex with him and trying out every page of the Karma Sutra together and wondering just how the heck you were supposed to live now. Although, since you aren't liable for the bloody expensive funeral, you might come out more or less even or even ahead of his wife and kids in that department. That is the kind of funeral Irene Stevens has gone to. Yeah, the moment it said that the guy was married to someone else, I had a feeling it was Irene. Also, last I checked, only I think it's like it's either ten percent or thirty percent. Uh, only ten or thirty percent of the Kama Sutra actually has to do with sex, really? like sex positions. Yeah, still, it's not I... even half. Well, uh, I. And the Lutz had been inconsiderate enough to get himself killed driving Irene's sporty little Maserati that he had bought for her, bent it and broke it, and splattered it with his blood and ichor, all kinds of bodily fluids, all more or less foul and sticky, and all resonant over what was left of the ripe, uh, rich, ripe le red leather upholstery. Though the insurance settlement from that ought to help her get on with her life, especially if she invested it wisely. Maybe you could finance some education so she could be a model or an actress or a porn star or something. Oh, no. Is this the, oh, is this the like, the earlier chapter she talked about getting that Yeah, yeah. Is she about to get the fucking flyer? I think she's going to get the flyer. <laughs> Are you about to meet Jack and what's-his-face? And, uh, fuck, I forgot what his name was. Sorry, I only remember Jack because, you know, Jack off. I... Well, then. She'd have to talk to the guys down at the club. If she could still get into the club now that Henry was dead, so she couldn't go on his arm or to meet him or to exercise and keep her body nice and svelte and trim and athletic for him because she for damn sure wasn't going to lose him to some tramp like Margaret Eastman or whoever. That Margaret, that bitch. <laughs> she, she showed up at the funeral bawling her eyes out like they'd been best buds or lovers or something. What a hypocrite. Probably hoping she could get a job from one of his friends or get laid by some hopeful dude there for the widows or orf and orphans or something. Well, he is 60, so his orphans wouldn't probably wouldn't be underage, but that's still really creepy. Yeah. Also, wow. Bit uh, cynical, ain't ya? This has been a very mean-spirited chapter, and we barely yes, started. it has. At least with the uh, other chapter she was in, it's just that she was an idiot. Yeah, now she's just being a bitch. After she went back to the con to their condo, her condo now, with the jacuzzi and his den and the all the clothes and jewelry he bought her and all that high class furniture and stuff, Henry had a thing for leather leather sofas, leather chairs, a leather mattress for hell's sake, leather underwear. Oh, that sounds uncomfortable. Ew. The leather whips and manacles. Leather manacles. What? And even a braided leather carp. Ah! A braided leather what? Carpet. Ooh. I'm okay. hoping that that's more like a leather mat that has a braided pattern to it, and not that it's strips of leather just poking up like a carpet. Ooh. Ooh. No, this does not sound comfortable Cause, anymore. Because walking barefoot on just like a leather sheet, yeah, that sounds all right. A carpet, but the fibers are actually strips of leather, less so. Uh, no, no, even, a, even a braided leather carpet that they'd made love on more than once. She'd have to clean out the den. Henry had not let her go in there for ages, maybe. There were bodies in there, like in Bluebeard. All the disassembled bodies of your maidens he'd carried off and secretly ravaged before cruelly cutting them into bits. What? This is a different story. Uh, hello? Uh, <laughs> uh, it's suddenly, Christian Grey's playroom isn't looking quite as bad. I mean, it's still terrible, but Jesus. <laughs> oh my gosh. What is this chapter? <laughs> Though, then again, the only thing that makes Christian Grey's playroom so bad is the fact that he keeps the same behavior in and out of it. It's not a playroom if every room's the playroom. Yeah, but the playroom is the only place that actually has the BDSM tool. 
Are they bolted down? <laughs> no, they they're just in move, drawers and shit. If they can move, any room can be the playroom. Okay. Just brings the entire dresser full of sex toys into the living room. Wait, honey, no, we had guests over. What? <laughs> Everything <Oops>. spills out. <laughs> ah, shit. <laughs> ah, God, that's the entire drawer full of dildos. It's just like one of those, like... Oh, no, no, the, all the anal beads are everywhere. <laughs> Grandpa slips on the anal bead. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, she'd stayed out of it, like you said, never once peeking into his din, so she still had all her bits, and then some. Amazing that what they could do with silicone and saline these days. Okay, yeah. Ew. Yeah, yeah. And there's nothing wrong with getting plastic surgery. I know, but still. Uh, it just seems so pointless. On some it's not my thing, but I'm not going to shame someone for it. Yeah. I guess you're right. So you could be the better man in this situation. His den. <laughs> Henry holed up in his den like a wild beast, hoarding his prey and coming out to hunt when he hungered for food and lusted for sex or thirsting for liquor or water or will or juice. Will. Will, will Smith. <laughs> uh, he's got that he's... one gay urge for just Will Smith. <laughs> well, I mean, doesn't everyone? Maybe. We'll see. Now this is the story all about how my life got flipped turned upside down. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. The... What was I doing again? The back of his den. Fuck, man. I'm trying to think of funny quips instead of reading, but when I should... That's why we always get distracted. <laughs> I figured it out. <laughs> you keep trying to match me on what I'm saying, but you can't think of anything. <laughs> I'm not good at the improv, man. <laughs> Gotta go take a class before I can show back up on this show. <laughs> I'll be back in a month. Gotta go take some improv classes. You can, you and Tom can hold down the fort. I mean, we basically have. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> the back to his den, or oh, it's then back out to his den, but it's just as the. God damn it! This fucking story. Grr, my name is Tom, and I'm angry at bad grammar. <laughs> there. That, that's, our, that's Tom's quip for this episode. Thanks, Tom. Go back to doing whatever you were doing. <laughs> to hunt for the lives and the fortunes of other men, or off to his wife, the, imbo- the abominable Callie Archer, who took up so much of his time. Well, he is his, uh, she is his wife. Whoops. <laughs> Uh-oh, I think she got more than plastic surgery. That different person. Callie Archer's the wife. Irene is the mistress. Fuck! I keep messing that up. <laughs> but he always this. came. But he always came back. Always came back for her athletic body and her wild sex and her margarita to keep the sunrises. Why are you and... turn still? Oh shit! You're right. Whoops. I mean, if you want to read the whole thing by yourself, that's fine. I'll just sit back <laughs> and you know watch. <laughs> But he always came back, always came back for her athletic body and her wild sex and her margarita and tequila sunrises and omelets and steaks and chops and their videotape. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Once recorded by hidden cameras in the bedroom when they made love like wild beasts, like penguins of the Sahara diving into the sand and running wildly after feasting on sand sharks. Holy shit. Penguins are a lot more metal than I thought. I mean, I haven't been on the... I, I... I could have swore I knew what penguins were, but I guess I was wrong. You just don't understand Sahara penguins. Uh, okay, so on Earth there is a specific breed of penguins called Sahara I learn new things about this planet every day. <laughs> Me too. Hold if, on, you, uh, if, you're, if you were born here... <laughs> I just live under a rock. You think what happens beyond my little space? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> All that hot sand to swim through, and the raspy ga- grain sliding over their feathers as they hunted in wild packs. <laughs> the Saharan desert penguins hunt in packs. <laughs> Bang at the moon and diving deep, deep down to the dusty depths of the dry smooth. S- what the fuck? <laughs> I'm thinking something kind of like the nibble snarf, but a penguin. What the fuck is a nibble snarf? Nibble snarf is like one of the. I think it's one of the Leviathan, uh, Leviathans from one of the earlier Monster Hunter games. 
but it swam through sand instead of water. <laughs> oh. And so it was like this massive head with this giant mouth. <laughs> Its cutscene involves it leaping out and eating two herbivores at once. Damn. Yeah. Like, they're charging at each other, and it just jumps out of the sand and catches them right when they hit each other. <laughs> yeah, damn. This whole, like, weird fucking sand metaphor for penguins, though, just does not sit well with me. I don't like sand. Coarse and irritating, and it gets everywhere. But at least I like shorts. They're comfortable and easy to wear. What would penguin leather be like? Would it have sort of lots of dense patterns of whorls where the feathers grew like ostrich leather did? Perhaps she could make some, uh, have something made of penguin. Jesus Christ, this woman! Did you know that to do that, they, they actually pluck the ostriches while they're still alive to get them to pucker up like that? That's even worse. Jesus yeah. Christ. God damn, this bitch is crazy. Oh, whoops. I just realized this is still the same paragraph. Ping, uh, made of penguin leather to remind her of Henry. A love seat. It's gonna be a lot of penguins. Or a Sahara penguin's just bigger. After all, they eat sand sharks. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> if you can eat a shark, you've gotta be pretty bulky. Sahara penguins are like the size of... <laughs> They're like the size of like a, I don't know, like a fucking like uh, great white or some shit. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like they just boy. like jump out of the sand and it's like this giant penguin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just picturing like an orange beak sticking out of the sand. Right <laughs> like what the fuck is that? No, no, no. The beak's sandy colored like the feathers. <laughs> <laughs> to help it camouflage. That'd be more probable, but like... Just these piercing black eyes. But it still squawks like a penguin. Oh, God. <laughs> and it can still jump like a penguin, too. Oh, my God. Because, you know, penguins can jump like three times their body length. I actually upwards. Did not know that. Oh, yeah. It's more like when they're coming out of the water, like, they repel themselves upwards, and so, like, a regular-sized penguin can typically get, like, a ten foot, like, ten feet out of the water to land on, like, an ice shelf. Damn. And so, like, when they're breaching out of the sand, they do the same thing. <laughs> and so it's just, like, this twenty-foot-long penguin just soaring over your head and back into the sand. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That is like a fucking Monster Hunter thing. Capcom, get on this. <laughs> You're welcome for the idea. A love scene or a fine set of whips and straps. Perhaps she might travel to the Sahara someday and watch them from the tops of the pyramids. Mount There's Fuji no penguins! <laughs> it's the Sahara. Fuck! This bitch is <laughs> retarded! Saharan penguins. Egypt's in the Sahara. Oh, my God. So Sahara penguins would probably be in Egypt. <sighs> uh, Mount Fujiyama off in the distance. <laughs> mm. Duplicating the smooth, slanted sides of the pyramids. Oh, Henry, you jerk. Why didn't you ever take me to places like that with giant carnivorous penguins that live in the sand? <laughs> Why didn't we travel instead of being cooped up in your uh, in hiding in your den, running like penguins or ostriches or lions on the leather cu cushion and couches and chairs and rugs? You know, I hope it's running like penguins because surprisingly enough, Adelaide penguins actually do do foreplay. I did not need to know that. Well, it's really funny when you consider the fact that, uh, like, an old-timey scholar basically, like, went down to the uh, Antarctic and was, like, uh, decided to, like, write a paper on the breeding habits of Adelaide penguins. However, what he saw there ended up basically, like, offending his old-timey uh, old sensibilities so much that he wrote it in ancient Greek so that only a gentleman and a scholar could read his findings. <laughs> now, That's bear in mind, cute. back in that day, again, like old-timey England, the fact that foreplay was a foreign concept to men. 
Wow. No wonder he was shocked. <laughs> what? They're not concerned about their partner being into it? I mean, what? They are concerned about their partner being into it and not just jumping in without caring? Uh, what poppycock right. is this? <laughs> uh, do you think giant sand penguins have four? Probably. <laughs> giant sand penguin foreplay. <laughs> oh, you just hear the distance as a huge rumble, like oh. You just hear like them slapping each other with their uh, with their uh, wings. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> Every time. that There's like a joke whenever the sand shifts drastic penguins <laughs> fucking each other. <laughs> they're not doing it on top of the sand. They're burying themselves first. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Keep them nice and tight so they can't run away. Whoa, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> what? Dude, it's penguins, not otters. Or seals. Or a lot of Or dolphins. Animals. Or ducks. Oh yeah, ducks, ducks. Oh yeah, yep. Yeah. But uh, I'm trying to remember, if memory serves, sea otters actually will rape baby seals. Oh, yeah, I think I heard about that too. And elephant seals, basically the whole thing that the males do is they do but basically nothing but fuck and yell. And they have a habit of pinning their partners down and sometimes crush them to death. Ooh. Can we get anyway. back on topic? <laughs> yeah, it, instead of getting distracted by animals that rape each other. <laughs> we really do just talk about any bullshit. We do. <laughs> I think it's because we're afraid of offending Tom's sensibilities. <laughs> it must be that. <laughs> just con like unconsciously just like, I don't think Tom will like this. Let's just not. I think Tom might be offended if we bring up porn. <laughs> Like good Christian boy, oh no. <laughs> we <laughs> offend our good Christian friend. <laughs> uh, anyways, let's read again. Is it my turn? Yes, it's your turn. Where am I again? You used to love it. You used to call me on the self. <sighs> you used Late to love it when you need my love. Press one to receive my love. Press two for services. <laughs> You used to love it when I pulled on the leather strap or made love. You knew I needed you. You too. cut out <laughs> after you said leather. When I pulled the leather strap around your neck when we made love. You knew I needed you too much, never pull too long or too hard. You loved it when I saddled you and rode you around. When I put the bit between your teeth and the golden spurs with the softly rounded oh, shit. of your flanks. Not enough. Oh no. Wood. But She's not. booting it with spurs on? <laughs> Ow! Good fucking lord! I this felt that in my me. hips! Ooh, yeah, ooh. Ooh. <laughs> but enough to goad you on, around and around, no, around the balcony and up and down the stairs, and then we <laughs> tumble to get together again when you, with, with you panting and sweaty and full of lust. Oh god, tumbling down the stairs with spurs on. That's a one-way ticket to injury. Yes. Perhaps I could sell the tack to someone with a pony. But I'll keep the spurs. The golden spurs. And the and whips. The whips. <laughs> oh my, kinky. Just a week before, Irene Stevens came back from the field and decided to clean out Henry Archer's den in their condo. Henry red leather chair. Irene had a, <laughs> had a thing for leather. Practically everything in the condo was leather and or leather upholstered or leather decorated or something. Henry leaned back in his red leather chair and mused, think, thinking fondly. Wait, I thought the guy liked the leather. Now they're saying Irene likes the leather? They both like the leather. I see. Well, no, it's saying that he had a thing for leather. Practically but everything in Irene, his condo. Irene had a thing for leather. It says it right there. Wait, does it say Irene had a thing for leather? Oh, yeah. I they guess both they both like had leather. a thing for leather. Yeah. I, I, I wonder if the other one thinks it's the only the other Hmm. Ow. Anyways, can we start reading? Why are you just sitting there, man? Yeah, yeah, it's your go. Really? Yeah. Perhaps. Oh, yeah. Fuck. <laughs> Wait. Thinking fondly of the cow. Oh, it's the fucking... 
okay. It's just the thing that only I had to deal with for a bit, where it like in like it switches like in the middle of a sentence. Mm-hmm. Thinking fondly of the cow that had given its life for his comfort. That's a bit morbid. Yeah. He wondered what this particular cow had been like. Had it a name? Had it had a name? Yes. J135. It was a fucking storehouse cow that got slaughtered. Anyways. Its name was Jefferson. (laughs) You gave it a cute pet name, and I'm over here like, fuck, this cow probably had a really shitty life. (laughs) Had it had feelings or thoughts, or was it only driven by its own stupidity, like his last one-night stand? (laughs) Damn! Uh, Jefferson, you will be missed. Ended up slipping and breaking your leg and drowning. Anyway, <laughs> uh, a new thought occurred to him. What if it had been made of steak, chops, soup, uh, soup bones, and McDonald's veggie burgers? <laughs> also, he remembered the steak he'd eaten last night and wondered dimly if this cow had contributed to satisfying not only his root, uh, rheumatism. But his appetite as well. These people are dark as fuck in this chapter. What's going on? I think specifically of the animal that died to get me this food. And the sweet leather couch that I'm eating its body in. (laughs) His thoughts strayed to the paper that was lying limply on the antique desktop in front of him that was also made out of leather, even his newspaper. Oh god, his his computer just has like a leather casing. (laughs) Oh, man. That actually sounds like it would feel kind of nice, though. Yeah, but how well would it be able to, you know... Oh, fuck, I think I'd catch on fire. You have to make sure that it's not, like, covering the vent. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah. I'm worried about... Anyways, where was he again? Uh... Let's see. Oh, his thoughts strayed. Yeah, his thoughts strayed to the paper that was lying limply... Laying limply on the desktop in front of him. What was yeah. it he, that he was going to write? His mind seemed full of fog, like the fog in New York City. He had lived there once, as a boy, before he was rich. New York made him think of other famous cities he had visited, like France and Rome. He wondered if they had cows in Rome. <laughs> <laughs> Vatican cows. Google, is there cows in Rome? Honestly, like, him bringing up the fog in New York City made me think of the fog in, like, Hong Kong and Beijing. Which made me remember, uh, like, the souvenir stores in Beijing. One of the funniest things is that they have their own, like, I Heart NY style shirt, but for Beijing, so it's I Heart BJ. (laughs) I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Ah, that's golden. Ah, those poor innocent And the whole thing is that that over there, they don't, uh... Like, over there, it's just the whole thing of they don't understand, like, it's supposed to be... uh, They don't understand, like, what BJ means in, like, English-speaking countries. They don't know any windows, yeah. So it's like, oh, you love BJ? (laughs) (laughs) I, too, love BJ. Oh, boy. Uh, let's... Like, it's an actual thing, and... Oh, shit, no, that's not what I wanted! (laughs) I accidentally... I accidentally clicked save image. Hi. There we go. <laughs> but yeah, if you go to Beijing, you can buy those shirts. Oh boy. <laughs> just imagine like being out like a club one night and you just end up like with some of the people local just like, "Oh, hey, that guy's from not ar- not from around here. I should just go start like talking to him." It's like, "Oh, hey, yeah, that shirt. You love BJ?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're start sitting there giggling the entire time. Oh yes, yes, I do love BJ. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, yes, yes, I love BJ too. Oh no, oh, this is BJ horrible. is my favorite. <laughs> Henry puzzled over his letter to Irene. He had to word his thoughts just right. He, uh, she was a beautiful woman, and his heart belonged to Margaret Eastman. He loved the way her curvaceously voluptuous body fit into those tight, uh, tight, fit into her tight nurse outfit. She was a bit older and more cultured than Irene was, uh, than Irene as well. He let out a long sigh at the thought of her. He dug around in his desk until he found a cigarette and a lighter, uh, and a lighter one of the drawers. 
He lit up and thought. Ah, uh, shit. Okay, I'm... Shit, is... Is the soundboard... God damn it, it needs to be updated! <laughs> you need to update your soundboard that you never use. Because that, that voice changer, one of the sound effects on it is that smoke weed every day one. <laughs> <laughs> and I was going to play that, but no, Clownfish needs to be updated. He needed to put it delicately and not break her heart. Finally, he decided on the perfect words. He put pen to paper the same way men, uh, men put knives to wrist. Uh, some men put knives to wrists. Uh, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, no. Bad I'm uncomfortable. Analogy. Yeah, this is even worse than the whole thing that caused me to be uncomfortable about the commentary of bulimia. <laughs> there was what? Yeah. I just did talk about bulimia in this story. Yeah. When he was finished, he looked over his work and smiled as he read the sentences. Hey, baby, sex... Hey, baby, the sex was great. But I never liked blondes much anyway. I found someone better. Still, love you lots, Henry. <laughs> no! <laughs> the perfect words. He had to admit, he was a Shakespeare <laughs> and Jerry Springer's. He nah, he's more letter. of a Dane Cook among Shakespeare's. <laughs> He placed a letter in the envelope and addressed it to Irene. No wonder Irene fucking hates him. <laughs> Setting the letter on his desk, he strode out to his Mercedes to buy a diamond ne necklace for Margaret. What the fuck? That is a terrible way to break up with someone. He might as well have done it over text or Facebook message. <laughs> or like broke up with them just by uh, saying that they're no longer a relationship on Facebook without actually messaging her. Oh my god, I think this might even be worse, because this dude sent you a letter in the mail. Like he oh yeah, like, the letter in the mail is bad enough, but the phrasing of it! <laughs> who sends a letter, who wastes good paper on a letter like that? <laughs> That's your problem. Not what the letter said, but the fact that it's a breakup letter. A shitty breakup letter. Yeah. Hey babe, sex was great, but... <laughs> oh. Uh... Oh, fuck this game. Chad Thundercock here to say that you should never break up with someone in this way. If you're going to break up with someone, do it face to face. Show some respect for them. This has been Chad Thundercock. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Chad C Thundercock. We should have you're welcome. More. We should have him on here whenever Tom's not here. Well, he was. He, he first popped up with Tom. <laughs> Well, fuck Tom. Because <laughs> it's a whole joke about me giving you relationship advice in that voice. <laughs> As Chad Thundercock. Yeah, it's just making fun of incels, basically. Was that your second porn star name? No. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> no, that was my stripper name. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I read Stevens tried to tried the knob on the door of the den. Henry's wild den that he loves so much and been so secretive about. It was unlocked, and so she went in at last after all these months now that Bluebird was dead. Mahogany shelves lined one wall, lined with canning jars full of clear fluid and cloudy lumps. There was an ebony desk and a red leather chair. There were filing cabinets and a large black safe. There was a rack of pistols and sh rifles and shotguns, holsters for the pistols and shoulder holsters and belts. Two of the rifles had big scopes on them, and hunting knives, and fillet knives, and buck knives and cheese, and cameras, a small one, like a lighter, a couple of bigger ones, and three with huge lenses and tri tripods. Did this guy just buy a bunch of fucking hunting rifles and guns that he never used? Well, he was a rich old white dude. <sighs> that would be something a rich old white dude would try to buy just to seem cool. Yeah, kind of like like a, uh, like whenever you see like rich old white dudes go like deep sea fishing, and really it's just like the boat crew's doing all the fishing for him, and all the rich old white dude is doing is sitting in a chair with the fishing pole, uh, like sitting in a chair strapped to it with the fishing pole in his hands. Mm -hmm. It's like, ah, oh, I'm doing the deep sea fishing myself. So Bluebird did save bits, body parts, and he hunted. She looked at the jars. Pale, fleshy bits and skin were resolved into a cock and balls. What? I'm trying to remember the name of this film. This is reminding me of. Hitchhiker, Cincinnati, August 1991. Red one. Eyeball. Waitress. June. June 2000. A kidney. Ro 
Oh my god. Roadkill, Tennessee, May 1998. She shuddered, but her loins warm, thinking of the wild beast, the hunter, her mount. Oh this god. This waitress. Did she did he actually kill someone? He killed a at very least a hitchhiker and cut off his cock and balls. A waitress and saved her eyebrows. And some dude in uh, no, he found a dead body in Tennessee and took the kidney. What the fuck is with this man? What the fuck uh. is with this lady? Uh. Whose man's is this? <laughs> this man I, deserved to die. <laughs> Irene looked at the file cabinet next to the gun rack. The top drawer was filled with ammunition, shotgun shells, rifle bullets, pistol bullets. I mean, depending on the caliber, those are technically the same thing. Yeah. The rest of the drawers were filled with papers, full of names and dates and pictures of people doing all kinds of things. Some of it was porno stuff, and there was some other pictures, too. The other filing cabinets were much of the same. Folders of pictures and notes, some good porn, but a lot of it was boring stuff. Damn. <laughs> she kinky. <laughs> there were some letters on the top of the safe, all adrift to the post office boxes. She opened one, and there was, a money, and there was money inside. She pocketed it. <laughs> She'd have to go through all this stuff. There's probably money in the safe, too. She wondered if she could sell the jars on eBay. Probably. Selling the human pieces that he got off the street on eBay. No. You probably could. Yeah. Well, not on eBay. You probably have to do, like, some Craigslist. underground market or something. <laughs> but <laughs> I don't know what I just... And in this box, she found his snuff film collection. <laughs> oh, my. She turned to the desk. There was just a single envelope there, and her name was on it. She opened it. Irene read the letter and then stood there for a long... Is this the Hey Baby letter? Oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> she t Where was I again? I just lost. Uh, She read the letter. Irene read the letter and then stood there for a long, long time. She cried at first, but then her tears slowed into a grin that surfaced. A nasty grin. <laughs> I'm just imagining the grin from the animated version of the Grinch. <laughs> just and then he had an idea. A terrible, despicable, nasty idea. <laughs> last laugh, Henry. I, I get the last laugh. She'll never have you. None of them will have you. Ever. And she took the package she'd get gotten at a mon mor mortuary. Mortuary. Mortuary, the very expensive one, of course. The one that she'd paid the embalmer so much embalmer. embalmer so much for. There were empty drawers on the bottom of the shelf and a can. Oh, oh, oh that's still me. And a can labeled alcohol, two hundred proof. She unwrapped the packet and slid the slid the cock and balls inside the jar, then filled it with alcohol. Oh! <laughs> Hell, this bitch crazy. This bitch cray. <laughs> this bitch cray. This just took a dark turn. I, I was she, not she, ready for she this. Dead ass, she, she dead ass asked the mortuary for this dude's cock and balls. Uh, and now she's putting it in alcohol. Well, how else are you supposed to preserve it? Uh... You're mine now, Henry. You'll always be mine. She found a label and wrote on it. Philanderer, Atlanta, March 2004. She put the jar on the middle shelf next to the hitchhiker. What the fuck was that chapter? What was da, da, the ending of that da, chapter? Da, 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 <laughs> Oh, boy. Well, leaving it off on that note. Uh, yeah. Fucking <laughs> hell. Uh, uh, this has been Joel the Jackhammer Smith. <laughs> and Tito the Bandito. I guess. <laughs> I, I don't have anything clever right now. Uh, uh, my name is a cock and balls inside a jar. <laughs> See you next time. Bye. <laughs>